So Albion take on Sunderland at the Hawthorns on Saturday in what is a massive game for the Baggies. If Albion win on Saturday, then I'm pretty confident that we have pretty much secured our spot in the playoff spots. After a really important win on Wednesday evening against Rotherham and a lot of the teams below us dropping points, it really has put the pressure on teams chasing us now. Both Preston North End and Coventry City have a game in hand on us. However, they'll have to win three of the last five games just to get equal on the points we're currently on. But if I was a Coventry City fan or a Preston North End fan, I would be thinking we need to win all five of our last five games to catch West Bromwich Albion up. And even then, that probably won't be enough to catch West Bromwich Albion up. I was at the Rotherham game on Wednesday. I do apologise there was not a vlog. I've been struggling a little bit with my phone. Basically, I've been struggling to charge it. However, I have ordered a new wireless charger. So hopefully the vlogs will return on Saturday. But my thoughts on the Rotherham game then, uh, I think a lot of people will agree with me in saying it's probably not a game they will remember for a very long time. However, it was a very important win, in my opinion. It's taken a bit of the outside noise away that West Bromwich Albion might bottle it this season. And it was important to get back to winning ways after a few disappointing performances. I did not think Albion were at their best, but I don't think we really needed to be, to be honest. Uh, you can only beat what's in front of you. And I don't think we really got out of first gear. I thought respectfully Rotherham were quite dreadful. Albion made a few mistakes during the game that a lot of other teams in the division would have punished. Whenever Rotherham came at us and attacked us, I never really felt threatened. They're genuinely one of the worst sides I've seen at the Hawthorns for a very long time. Fair play to all the Rotherham fans that came, uh, proper supporters. You know, a lot of people would take the mick out of the little amount of supporters that came to the Hawthorns. But, you know, it's a Wednesday night and they already know their fate. They've already been relegated. They're coming up against a side who are in the playoff spots who are clear favourites to win the game. I, I don't blame the ones that didn't travel down to the Hawthorns, but fair play to the 100 or so nutters that came down and supported their club. Proper football fans, all, all of you that came. I thought the team news on Wednesday was quite interesting. Obviously, the big call to drop Connor Townsend for Adam Reach. You know, I am often quite critical of Adam Reach, uh, but in all fairness, I thought he played quite well on Wednesday evening. He is one of those players that I think we need to be looking at moving on uh, in the near future. I think his contract is out in the summer. I certainly wouldn't be renewing his contract. I think in the summer, it probably will be time to say goodbye to Adam, unfortunately. But fair play, I thought he had a really good game on Wednesday evening, pushed up the field very well, obviously put in a fantastic ball for Brandon Thomas Asante's goal, made it an easy finish for Brandon in the end. I thought Adam Reach did get caught out defensively a few times, but that's nothing we haven't come to expect from Connor Townsend on a regular basis. I think Connor Townsend did have to be dropped after his performance at Stoke. I thought he was dreadful that day. And he's been crying out for a bit of competition for years now. He's now going to have to work hard to get his place back in the team. I think Alex Mowat was just given a rest on Wednesday and Villa came in and did a solid enough job. But for me, Alex Mowat comes back into the side alongside OK Yukoslu uh, on Saturday. I'm hoping Grady Diangana was just given a rest as well. He's a much better option down the middle behind the centre forward than John Swift, in my opinion. Grady Diangana, for me, just creates a lot more than John Swift. He obviously has that moment of magic in him as well and moves the ball forward a lot quicker. I think Jed Wallace was out ill on Wednesday. Hopefully he's all right and will be back in the squad for Saturday. Again, Jed Wallace is another player that I am often quite critical of. I think he's a great guy, represents the club well. He's a fantastic captain. I can't knock his work rate as well. He often puts in a lot of effort. But I must say, I think his final product a lot of the time isn't great. And I'd much rather go with Tom Fellows, uh, Mikey Johnson and Grady Diangana as the three behind the centre forward. It was great to see Josh Madger back in the squad as well. I think Brandon Thomas Asante has been crying out for a bit of competition as well. You know, he's been doing all right. Obviously, he got the goal on Wednesday evening. However, let's be honest, he probably could have scored a hat-trick with the chances he had. It's all right missing those chances against teams like Rotherham. They won't really punish us for it. But when we get into the playoffs, for example, and we come up against better sides, we will be made to pay for those missed chances. Obviously, Josh Madger will need minutes to get up to full match fitness. But I tell you what... A last-minute winner coming off the bench against Sunderland is written in the stars after the way they put him out injured earlier on in the season at the Stadium of Light. But moving on to Saturday's game against Sunderland, it should be a fantastic day and occasion. I always love it when uh, we play Sunderland. It should be a sold-out shrine with a fantastic Sunderland away following as well. You know, 3pm on a Saturday, where else would you rather be?
Sunderland have been a little bit disappointing in the second half of the season. They started off really brightly under manager Tony Mowbray. I think when I went to the Stadium of Light in November, December time, it was the first game after Tony Mowbray had been sacked. There was an interim manager in charge of Sunderland that day and they had beaten us to go sixth inside the playoffs. That just shows how much they have fell off. They are currently 15 points off sixth place in the playoffs and have mathematically nothing to play for anymore. The second of Tony Mowbray was 100% the wrong decision. I can't remember if there was a fallout or anything, or the board just thought they could go on for bigger and better things. But the appointment of Michael Beale, deary me Sunderland fans, I do feel sorry for you. I am an Albion fan, but I also, as you can see in the background, do follow Glasgow Rangers, and I go up to Ibrox uh, fairly regularly. I know all about Michael Beale. Uh, you know, he might be an all right coach, but he certainly is not. A manager. He certainly was out of his depth at two massive clubs in Glasgow Rangers and Sunderland. I think he's a little bit of a strange man as well. The amount of things I've seen come out about him and he talks a lot of rubbish. You know the way he left QPR? A few weeks before he left QPR he rejected the Wolverhampton Wanderers job. You know in fairness I don't blame him. But in an interview he said sometimes in football you have to show a little bit of loyalty and integrity. A couple of weeks later he left QPR to join Glasgow Rangers. Where's the loyalty Michael? He then went to Glasgow Rangers and was clearly out of his depth. You know, his win percentage wasn't too bad, but his failure to pick up trophies and win big European games and, and big games against the arch rival Celtic, along with some other very poor performances towards the end of his time at Rangers, saw him out the door. And you can just see how much they have improved since Philip Clement has come in and Michael Beale has left. But at Sunderland, dearie me, he really was poor. But for me, it was some of the prophetic things I saw coming out about him. You know, at Birmingham City away, when he substituted the player off, completely ignored him and refused to shake his hand. I think he said in an interview that Sunderland fans don't like him because of his Cockney accent. What a load of rubbish. He's also making fake Twitter accounts to defend himself. Very desperate and embarrassing, but also very odd behaviour. But going into Saturday's game then, Sunderland have actually kept four clean sheets in the last five games. However, the one game they did not keep a clean sheet, they lost 5-1 at home to Blackburn Rovers. Sunderland have also only scored three goals in the last five games as well. It's clear to see they're not a high-scoring team. Albion have also kept the most clean sheets in the league as well. So if I was a betting man, I think I'd be putting my money on a nil-nil draw. But going back to what I said earlier about Thomas Asante taking his chances... It's clear to me that Sunderland are quite good at the back. He really is going to have to take those chances on Saturday. But I really do hope Albion are back firing on all cylinders. We haven't really seen the best of the team since the international break. I think the international break probably came at the wrong time for the baggies. All the fluency seems to have gone from our play since the international break. However, one thing I will say, we have not been at our best since the international break. Albion still haven't lost a game since the international break either. I think we was very lucky to get something from the game against Watford at home. A moment of magic saved us. And I'd argue we were second best for the majority of the game against Stoke City, despite being 2-0 up in the game. You know, the game finished 2-2, but I think if one team deserved to win the game, it probably was Stoke City. We are also unbeaten in 10 games at the Shrine. We've only lost three times there this season in the league. So I don't see us losing on Saturday. My heart says if we bring our A game, we should be good enough to turn Sunderland over at the Hawthorns on Saturday. However, my head is telling me that we can afford to draw this game and it won't be an easy task. I'm going to go for a score prediction of 2-1 to West Bromwich Albion. Grady Diangana and Alex Mowat to score. Key players to look out for for both sides then. I think for West Bromwich Albion, I'm going to go for Gray D.D. and Garner. I think he's been class since he's uh, taken up this number 10 role down the middle of the park. He's creating so much for West Bromwich Albion in recent weeks. Obviously, Mikey Johnson is one to look out for as well. He's bang on form. Uh, since we've signed him, the amount of goals he's been banging in for the Albion. He was massive for Albion's form uh, just before the international break. For Sunderland, I'm going to go for Jack Clark. You know, he's a fantastic player. For me, he's been their best player this season. He scored 15 goals so far this season. Running down that left-hand side, Darnell Furlong really has got a job on his hands. The lineup I personally would go for on Saturday is obviously Alex Palmer in goal. I'd go for Cedric Kipre and Kyle Bartley at the back. You know, the two standard centre-backs, they've both been outstanding this season. I'd go for Darnell Furlong at right back. I think he's probably been Albion's most underrated player this season. I think he's had a fantastic season. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on in the video, I'd go for Adam Reach at left-back. I never thought I'd be saying this, but I would start him on Saturday. 
I thought he had a really good game against Rotherham. And then just in front of the back four, I would go for Okai Yakoslu and Alex Mowat. The standard two uh, centre midfield partnership uh, this season for the Baggies. As I say, I think Alex Mowat was just rested on Wednesday evening. And then in front of them, I would go for Grady Diangana in that number 10 role. As I say, I think he creates a lot more than John Swift. The two wide men, I would go for Tom Fellows. He's been fantastic this season. Obviously one of our own. I've been really impressed with him. He's really come on since his loan spell at Crawley Town last season. And I go for Mikey Johnson on the other side as well. As I say, since we signed him on loan from Celtic, he's been fantastic. And I suppose you'd have to go for Brandon Thomas Asante up front. You know, you always get a lot of effort from Brandon Thomas Asante. He's not the most prolific goal scorer in the world, but you know you're going to get that effort from him. As I say, I'd quite like to see Josh Magic come off the bench as well. But I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to my channel if you are new. I thought I'd make another extra video for you guys as I wasn't able to bring you guys a vlog from the Rotherham game. But I'll see you on Saturday for Sunderland at home. Come on you baggies.